Hey Slate Belt Teens, Pastor Dustin here. Uh, oftentimes when we uh, start youth group, I give you guys a challenge question. So when I do attendance and call your name, you answer the question. So I'm going to do that here for you now. The question is, what do you have in common with old people? You heard me. What do you have in common with old people? Let me give you some examples. Uh, old people are often forgetful. Uh, they forget their children's names. They forget how to use a turn signal. They forget where they left their house. Do you have that in common with old people? Uh, old people also uh, often lose things. I remember a camping trip with my grandparents at Knobles and riding with my grandfather on the Phoenix roller coaster. Uh, he took his glasses off and put them in his front pocket. And as we were going up and down the bumps on the Phoenix roller coaster, out came those glasses, uh, never to be seen again. Um, on that same camping trip, I believe, uh, my grandmother took her dentures out uh, to clean them, and she left them on the picnic table and kind of wrapped them in a napkin. Uh, my grandfather came along and, and cleaned up the camp and tossed out the napkin along with grandma's teeth. Um, so old people are often losing things. Maybe you have that in common. Old people also often have trouble getting out of bed in the morning. Maybe that's you. <laughs> what do you have in common with old people? Well, that's actually what we're going to be talking about today on this episode of Quarantines. Hi, so this year in youth group, uh, before we were so rudely interrupted by an apparent plague, uh, we had been studying faith, and we've been in Hebrews chapter 11. And in Hebrews chapter 11, the writer of Hebrews has given us a definition of what faith is, what it's like, but then he also gave us a bunch of examples of what faith has looked like in the Bible in the Old Testament. And so, as we come to today, we've, we've talked um, about folks like Abel, uh, Enoch, uh, Abraham, Sarah, Noah, and today we're going to come to three more characters um, who exhibited faith and lived by faith uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verses 20 through 22. <clears throat> and the thing that all three of these had in common was that they showed their faith in their old age. And so let's read Hebrews chapter 11, verses 20 through 22. By faith Isaac, invoking future blessings on Jacob and Esau, by faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. Let's review what we know about these three characters. First, you have Isaac. And Isaac is probably best known from the time when uh, God commanded Abraham to uh, sacrifice his son, Isaac, as an act of faith, which we actually just covered in Hebrews 11, verses 17 through 19. Um, and I can only imagine um, Isaac's sons, Jacob and Esau, coming to, them at, coming to him as children and saying, Hey, Dad, tell us about that time when you almost died. All right, tell us that story again. Uh, it was probably a pretty popular story. But Isaac was the one that... God had promised to Abraham to fulfill his promise of making him a great nation and through him blessing the entire world, um, foreshadowing the coming of the Messiah, Jesus, who would die for the sins of all the world. And so Isaac was the son of Abraham through whom this promise, this blessing was going to come. And so we see here in Hebrews 11 that Isaac... Um, it says he invoked future blessing on Jacob and Esau, his two sons. Uh, another Other translations say Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. So he had confidence that God would keep his promises through his children. Isaac was confident that God's promises would be fulfilled uh, in the future through the children that God had given him. Next we come to Jacob. And just trying to highlight some of the stories of Jacob in the Old Testament, we probably know him best from his deceiving his brother into giving him the birthright 
uh, tricking his dad into thinking that he was Esau when he was blessing him, and then also getting a taste of his own medicine when he went to work for his uncle Laban and wanting to marry his daughter and Laban tricking him into marrying the other daughter first. And so we know him kind of as a trickster and that's probably what he's best known as, but he continued to follow God in faith. And Jacob had 12 sons. And if you remember the story near the end of his life, um, the famine uh, throughout the land and, and Jacob sent his sons to Egypt where they found Joseph who they had sent there. Um, and, and eventually Jacob's whole family moved down to Egypt and it says that Jacob blessed the sons of Joseph um, in verse 21 uh, in his old age. And so Jacob continued and passed on that blessing and, and in faith passed on the blessing that God had given to him down through Abraham and Isaac to the children of Joseph. And finally, we come to Joseph. Uh, Jacob's son and we probably know him best for the story of his life which was uh, his father loving him uh, more than his brothers and his brother hating him more than anybody else in the world and so his brothers tried to first considered killing him and ended up just selling him into slavery and he ended up in Egypt he ended up um, getting thrown in jail for something that he didn't do um, but he continued to have faith in God and trust God throughout all that and God used him to raise him up and, and become the second greatest in Egypt under Pharaoh. And so Pharaoh entrusted Joseph with the country and Joseph then um, foreseeing the famine that was gonna come on the entire world, um, uh, prepared Egypt for that. And in the end, his brothers came down and um, had to ask food from him uh, and so th that whole story ended with, again, like I said, Jacob and the whole family moving down there to Egypt. And so as we get to the story here in Hebrews chapter 11 about Joseph, it says that Joseph mentioned the, the future exodus of the Israelites in that he knew that they weren't always going to live in Egypt because he believed God's promises that God would give them the land in Cana, is where, um, where he had promised Abraham that land. And so Joseph mentioned that and mentioned to his descendants, hey, take, take my body, take my remains with you when you go. And so he had faith in God's promises to be fulfilled in the future uh, in front of him. And so what, what does all that mean for today? What does our faith in what does our faith have in common with these three old people um, from long ago? Well, let's talk about that next. Let me give you three things quick. Number one, faith does not lose its strength at death. Maybe you remember uh, when you were younger, uh, maybe having your birthday party, let's say, and you got all your presents, you had a great time. Um, if you're anything like me, shortly after that, then maybe even that day, later that day, you would start planning out your next birthday party. Man, you'd, you'd start racking up gift ideas and, and party ideas and, and things you'd want to go on at your birthday party next year. But as the days turn into weeks, and those weeks turn into months, that excitement kind of wanes. You know, you kind of lose interest as, you're, as things come up like vacation, and, and family time and, and just events in your life, sports, whatever, that you kind of lose that excitement uh, for that next birthday. Uh, you weren't quite as excited as you were when you were, you know, had just experienced it. Well, when we look at the life of these pa patriarchs, these uh, Isaac, uh, Jacob, and Joseph, they still remained faithful even in their old age, their time of death. Their faith continued to grow throughout their life to when they were at the end of their life. They remained faithful and, and full, of, full of faith in God and what he was doing. And so that's the first one. Secondly, faith, faith thanks God for future things as if they had were already passed. If you look at all three of these blessings that these men put on their children, um, all of them concerned events that were going to come in the future that they would not experience in their lifetime. 
You know, oftentimes we find it easy to, when we're praying and thanking God, to thank him for all the things that he has given us in the past. But this is, gives us evidence that we should also be thanking him for things in the future. How about the grace for tomorrow? God's love that he's going to show us tomorrow. His provision he's going to provide for us. Our future home in heaven with him. Let's thank God for not just the things of the past, but also the things of the future. Number three, faith draws encouragement from God's promises. Whenever the patriarchs were discouraged, they could look back on what God had promised to them and find contentment for the present time. This is why it's so necessary for us as Christians to recall and to record and to claim the promises that God has given to us. And so when you do your Bible reading, maybe you should be writing down the promises that you come across in God's Word. When God promises something, let's write that down. So later we can come back to that when we're in a time of discouragement and look at what God has promised to us. So, now test your own faith. How does your faith match up? And, and is there a commonality there with these three patriarchs of old? What do you need to do to grow your faith this week in God? Well, that wraps up another episode of Quarantine, so let me leave you with this. Remember, God is faithful to you, so let's grow in our faith in Him. It's Pastor Dustin, signing off.